Hi everyone, Cherise here and welcome to a new video. Today I'm gonna be doing a review of the Luna notebooks by Kuma Stationery and Crafts that are launched recently. I am very excited to be sharing all the features with pen and paint tests and for full transparency, Kuma Stationery and Crafts kindly sent me these notebooks for review and are also sponsoring this video. Regardless, all opinions here are entirely my own and I always do my best to give you honest feedbacks. So, let's try these notebooks and see how they perform. As shown in the beginning of the video, their notebooks come in a white box designed with their logo and when you open them, the notebooks are wrapped in a parchment paper. There are two designs with me here. The first notebook is the Hourglass Dreams in this beautiful dark blue linen hardcover. The Hourglass icon is hand stamped in gold foil. Personally, I don't really mind the size of the icon on the front. Some of you might like how it is, but there are also some people who might prefer a smaller cover design. There's also a sleeve around the notebook with the basic features written on it. And looking at the spine, there are doodles of crescent moon and stars in gold foil as well. Then we have the Kuma Stationery Crafts wording debossed at the back of the cover. And turning to the other side, the page edges of this notebook is gilded in gold. The second one is the Moonlit Potions Notebook. This would be my favorite among the whole collection. The cover is a light blue linen hardcover. The icon is this cute panda bear inspired by their logo inside a potion bottle that is also hand stamped in gold foil. It has the same spine doodle. The page edges are also gilded, but this one has etched details. There are four notebook designs and two cover options in their Luna collection. The other two are the Cosmic Kuma in purple and Enchanted Moon in black, and both come in vegan leather hardcover. Their notebooks are currently available in one size, which is A5. I will leave the link of their website below and if you're interested to try one of these notebooks out, they also provided an affiliate or discount code to reuse 10 for 10% off. Now let's remove the sleeve so we can see more of the features. They have color matching elastic bands that you can use to enclose the notebook and when you first open them, you will see an introduction page. There is a space to write out your name, and when you flip the next pages, you have the dot grid pages right away. There are two yellow silk bookmarks, a standard back pocket, and it also got a little accessory inside. Apart from the silk bookmarks, you can also use this gold bookmark. I'll just quickly show you the inside of the Hourglass Dreams notebook and as you can see, it has just the same features and accessory and probably to all the other notebooks in this collection. There are 160 pages, there are no page numbers, and the paper is 160 GSM. My preferences changed when I got to try thicker paper from using 120 GSM paper. It's because I like to use heavy mediums like paints in my notebook now, but I also know some of you have different preferences in regards to the page thickness. And if you also like thick pages and to be able to paint on it, this notebook would be a good choice. The page is bright white, though it gives a slight blue tinge. I made a quick comparison with some other brands of notebooks like Notebook Therapy, Archer and & Olive, and my current bullet journal from Maisie Lane Co. Due to my lighting, it looked like the Luna notebook on top is darker, so I interchanged them and it reflected the same to the Archer & Olive notebook on top. 
but in person they almost have the same whiteness. In terms of the dots, it is 5 millimeters. This notebook has a slightly darker dots than the other notebooks. It also lays flat, but there are parts where it needs to be pressed a little bit to lie fully, and I think that happens to a lot of notebooks. Now let's proceed to the pen and paint tests. I will be testing different types of pens first to give you an idea what writing supplies, markers, or basically the inks this paper can handle. So I'm starting with a fountain pen. The one I'm testing as well as the ink is from Fairy's Wheel Press. I'm not able to take a very close shot but there is just a tiny, tiny feathering when I looked closely but it is unnoticeable when looking at a distance. I also tried some everyday pens like fine liners and gel pens such as the Sakura Pigma Micron. Marvi Uchida, Pilot g -Tech, and Muji Gel Pen. Then a couple of calligraphy brush pens like Tombow Fudenosuke and Pentel Brush Sign Pen. I am doing the same template that I do in my notebook reviews, so I have a single wavy stroke and a shading. But when it comes to other brush pens like Crayola Super Tips, Tombow ABT, Sakura Koi, and Eco Line brush pens that are typically used as coloring illustrations aside from lettering. I tested them with maximum of three layers to see if the paper can handle multiple layers or strokes in the same spot. I tested a few more pens here such as the Monami Plus pen, Sakura Souffle and a bunch of white pens like Sakura Jelly Roll, Uniball Signo, Archer and Olive White Acrylograph, and Uniposca White Paint Pen. You might be curious as to why I test white ink on a white paper. It is to see which one matches the color of the paper since it is the best hack to cover up some mistakes on the page. I also tried another color of the Archer and Olive Acrylograph. It is an acrylic paint pen by the way. And then a couple gold pens, the Pilot Juice and Uniposca with a bigger nib. The last marker I tested is an alcohol marker, which is not really recommended to use on this type of paper, but I'm still including it here to give you an idea why I said so. Next is the paint test. I'm testing watercolors in three levels. First is a very pigmented application of this blue paint with a very little amount of water on my brush. Second, I loaded a bit more water on my brush and I also tried to blend two colors. The third one is the wettest. I was not contented with the amount of water I put in at first, so you can see me actually adding more and more water on the area. The next medium is gouache. I only tested it in the consistency that I usually use, so I just made a thick stroke of yellow paint and lastly is a metallic paint. Before we look into the results, I did a smudge test on the fountain pen ink and black pens to test how quick the paper absorbs the ink. I have sweaty hands, so smudges and ink transfers are my biggest pet peeves. I tested them in 1 second, 5 seconds, and 10 seconds. The Muji gel pen smudged the most, even on the 10 second mark. And I'm surprised that the Pilot g -Tech was completely absorbed in the 5 second and 10 second marks. But that's finally our tests and it's time to see the results on the other side of the page. As you can see, the alcohol marker bled through the page. As expected, the paper is not well suited for alcohol-based markers, so always check what kind of marker you're going to use and do a quick test at the back just to be sure. There is a little shadow from the third layers on the brush pen tests, but I think it shows only when you lift the page with a bit of backlighting, which is common in my experience. Apart from that, there are no other bleed-throughs from the pen section, 
As for the paint test, there are no ghosting or bleeding. There is only a little bit of buckling on the wettest area. Considering how much water I piled on that specific area, I must say I'm incredibly impressed by how this paper held up. But then again, still keep in mind how much water you use because it's not watercolor paper, just to avoid potential bleed throughs. When I flip back to the front side, I noticed that the Uniball Signo matched the paper the most. This paper performed very similar to Notebook Therapy with a 160 GSM paper and Archer and Olive with a 160 GSM paper as well. So if you have tried those notebooks, you will get the same experience in terms of the paper quality. The price of these notebooks are approximately 35 US dollars, which are quite on the high side, but comparing to Archer and Olive A5 notebooks that start at 37 US dollars and notebook therapy with 31 US dollars in the current conversion rate, the Kuma Luna notebooks are in the middle of this price range. In my opinion, the overall performance of these notebooks are really great. I find a lot of similarities with notebooks that I enjoyed using throughout my bullet journaling journey. They are of high quality. It holds up to many mediums whether they are different types of pens and markers with the exception of alcohol-based markers as mentioned of course and whether they are watercolors and gouache paints. I'm pretty sure it also holds up to acrylics in tubes if you like to play around with those as well on your journal. Since these notebooks are just new in the market, there are no other sizes available yet. But if you like using A5 size notebooks, this would be a nice selection. So let me know in the comments what you think of these notebooks based on their features and pen tests or maybe your notebook preferences, what you're looking for in a notebook as your bullet journal, if you're likely to pick up one of these notebooks, and which design you are drawn to. And with that, it is the end of this notebook review. I hope it was helpful and gave the insight you need for this new brand of notebooks. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on my next video. Bye everyone!